The first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, uh, starting at chap in chapter 10, uh, verse 33. See the Lord, the Lord Almighty, will lop off boughs with great power. The lofty trees will be felled. The tall ones will be brought low. He will cut down the forest thickets with an axe and Lebanon will fall before the Mighty One. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might, the Spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy, with justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, with the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. An infant will play near the cobra's den and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all of my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In that day the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him, and his resting place will be glorious. This is the word of the Lord. This reading is taken from Matthew chapter 3. In those days, John the Baptist came, preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven has come near. This is he who was spoken of through the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him. John's clothes were made of camel's hair, and he had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. People went out to him from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the river Jordan. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to where he was baptizing, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce fruit in keeping with repentance and do not think you can say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. I tell you that out of these stones God can raise up children of Abraham. The axe has been laid to the root of the trees and every tree that does not produce good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance, but after me comes one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear the threshing floor, gathering the wheat into the barn and burning up the chaff with unquenchable fire. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. The axe is mentioned in both those readings, and um, I have actually borrowed an axe from Chris that I thought I might bring as a visual aid. But having seen the reaction of a couple of the guys when Chris gave it to me last night, and the fear on their faces, I thought I'd better leave that at home today, and I'd just leave you with the imagination of an axe to have a look at. Let's pray. 
Father God, thank you that we can be here this morning. Thank you, Lord, that in the busyness of Advent, in the busyness of our lives, we can just take time out to be here together with you this morning. Lord, thank you for your word, those words that were written hundreds and thousands of years ago that are still relevant to us today. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to us through your word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. The kingdom of heaven is near. When black people are segregated and divided from white people, when black people cannot get on the same bus or go to the same school as white people. The kingdom of heaven is near. When members of the same family are separated by man-built walls, when cobbled streets and empty supermarkets exist just a few miles from a tarmacked autobahn and extravagant excess. The kingdom of heaven is near when drug lords rule entire tower blocks, making people captive to their addictions. The kingdom of heaven is near when I spend £35 on a Christmas tree and a few doors away there are people who cannot afford to feed their children. When I can afford solicitor's fees but a neighbour maybe cannot afford to pay for the justice that they need to be done. The kingdom is near. Repent for the kingdom is near, said John. John was teaching that the kingdom of heaven was near. A new kingdom, a new citizenship, a new and distinct way of life. Not one where people could rest on their laurels and claim the benefits, the pleasures of the kingdom just because of their birthright. The Pharisees and the Sadducees were claiming that the kingdom of heaven was theirs just because their ancestor was Abraham, just because they had been born into the right family. But John was claiming that belonging to, living in the kingdom of heaven was possible for anyone and for everyone, anyone who repented, anyone who admitted their sin so that God could clean up their lives with forgiveness and healing. God can raise up children for Abraham out of any of these stones, said John. God offers us the thought of being inhabitants in the kingdom of heaven and transforming, transforming this world. The kingdom of heaven that John said was near is a new kingdom, a new and distinct, a different, a countercultural way of living. The people Isaiah was speaking to were in captivity and waiting for release and freedom, waiting for that new kingdom. Isaiah promised them, God promised them through Isaiah, that the big powers would be felled, would be cut down with that axe, the forests would be chopped. And in their place would come something new, a new king and a new kingdom. But how? Not as huge trees, but as a small shoot, as a tiny, small, vulnerable shoot from an unexpected source. I don't know if you've ever pruned roses or fruit bushes or buddleia. If you've driven past my house, there was a buddleia bush that was about a 15 foot high that my neighbours chopped down for me to about this high. And there are tiny shoots a year ago, one of my brothers, who is not known for his delicacy, pruned mum's roses. I think mum thought they were never going to survive the winter. And yet this summer, there were beautiful yellow flowers like they've never flowered before. He didn't quite take the axe to them, but he pruned them to almost nothing. And in the spring, the new shoots came. And in the summer, we had a mass of yellow roses. Isaiah says, that instead of the boughs of great power and lofty trees and forest thickets, there would be a shoot, a few tiny leaves from the stump of Jesse, 
which would grow, which would become something incredible, a new king and a new saviour. Isaiah says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. And then right at the end of the reading, in that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples. The nations will rally to him. Have you seen films like Braveheart, where the leader of the people has a huge banner, has something that the people can see, and the troops rally round him? A similar thing I think often of is um, often Asian uh, tourists in London and the tour guide has their brolly and they have a swarm of people following along round behind them around the city. In that day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples and the nations, all of them, will rally to them. As I was preparing today, there were lots of threads I thought over the last few months we've been talking about. We talked about the healing of the nations. We've talked about justice. Lots of those themes that we've heard about over the last few months come into today's reading. But who was this Jesse, this Jesse that the shoot would come from? Well, he was the grandson of a couple called Ruth and Boaz. There's a whole little book in the Bible called Ruth. That's his grandmother. And he was the father of David, the father of King David, who wrote all those psalms that we were reading about in the summer. From this unassuming person came someone very significant. And he gets mentioned, Jesse gets mentioned in the genealogy, in that list of Jesus' parents at the beginning of Matthew. Jesse is there. He's not one of the people that's got whole books mentioned after him. He's a small person in the sense of might be overlooked. And yet, from him, this tiny shoot was going to come. And this shoot, this person that was coming from the root of Jesse, would have amazing qualities. You can see them there in the reading. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, knowledge, righteousness, justice. And he would not judge by what he saw or heard. How often do we hear things as we hear them and not as the other person tells them? There's a brilliant Two Ronnies sketch, and I wanted to show it, but it was six minutes long, and I thought we might run out of time this morning. It's brilliant, the Two Ronnies, and there's Ronnie Corbett, the smaller one, who is in an old general store, things everywhere, all sorts of everything. And the other Ronnie walks in and he has his list and he just stands at the counter. Four candles. He looks at him, the guy behind the counter looks at him and says, four candles. Yeah, four candles. So Ronnie goes off and he gets out and he comes out and he puts four candles, just like those on Jackie's wreath that's gone, four candles, puts them down on the desk. Four candles. Nah, four candles. Oh, four candles. And he goes off and he gets a long wooden fork handle. Not four candles, a fork handle. Look it up if you can. It's just hysterical. How these two guys with this list get everything completely wrong. The guy with the list knows exactly what he's talking about. And the guy behind the counter gets every single thing wrong. Not four candles, fork andles. Have a look at it. It's great. But we hear things wrong, don't we? We get things wrong. We hear what we want to hear. But the promise is here that this new person coming won't hear what he wants to hear, won't see what he wants to see. He'll judge through righteousness and purity and honesty and wisdom and understanding. Justice for everyone, not just those who can afford it, not just those in the right place at the right time, but justice for all. These passages are about waiting, about preparation, and about promise. Promise of a change, promise of a new kingdom. The kingdom is near, said John. And it began the kingdom of heaven when God came to earth as that tiny little baby, the Christ child. He came to earth as one whose sandals John was not worthy even to carry. 
as one who was able to raise up children of Abraham from stones, as one who carried his winnowing fork in his hand and who cleared the threshing floor, as one who the Jewish people 2,000 years ago were waiting for, as one we call Jesus and whose birthday we celebrate on the 25th of December. The kingdom of heaven is near. And the kingdom will be fully realised, will be fully here when Christ comes again to remove evil, when even the animals live in peace and harmony. I don't know, I can't even remember what the programme's called. There's a programme that I just caught a little bit of this week and I turned it on and there were these lions, these huge lionesses, and this lady kind of half lying with them chatting to the person who was commentating. It's something like strange... I don't know, I can't remember. But it just wasn't right. This woman just lying amongst these wild animals, chatting. And yet this passage says exactly that. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and the lion, the yearlings, will be together. All these animals that are at conflict in our world now will be at unity, will be in peace. And a little child will lead them completely turned on its head in this kingdom there will be peace and there'll be harmony and the people we think of as meek and powerless will be strong and courageous the kingdom will be fully realized when christ comes again to fully remove evil when the animals live in peace and harmony and led by the gentleness and weakness that we might associate with a child a shoot would come, a banner for the peoples, where nations will rally and where his resting place will be glorious, it says. Animals living in peace and harmony, where those who have trampled the meek become the meek. Where one day we can read, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord. This is a time to come, a time that we are still waiting for. And the kingdom of heaven continues as Christ now lives in the hearts of believers. The kingdom of heaven is near but coming nearer because of people like Nelson Mandela. Because now black people can live alongside white people and enjoy life together. The kingdom of heaven is near but becoming nearer because artificial divides like the Berlin Wall have been demolished and inequalities removed. The kingdom of heaven is near but becoming nearer because of people like Jackie Pullinger who have gone and shared in people's lives and taken Jesus with them. The kingdom of heaven is near but becoming nearer because in 1996, a couple called Paddy and Carol met a baby in Bulgaria and then in the year 2000, spoke to a woman in Salisbury, just down the road, who could not afford to feed her child. And they started the Trussell Trust, which started food banks, the like of which we have now in Bath. The kingdom of heaven is nearer, but becoming nearer because of people around us. And I pray because of us. These passages are about waiting. They're about waiting for a promise to be fulfilled. They're about change and they're about belonging to the kingdom of heaven. Isaiah promises that the root of Jesse, the Christ son of God, will be the rallying point, will be the place where we can all have glorious rest. And that's an unknown time in the future. Even Jesus doesn't know, didn't know when that would be. A promise for which we are still waiting. John promises that the kingdom of heaven is near because the one who is more powerful than he, more powerful than John, is about to come, Jesus the Christ child. And this promise has been fulfilled, a promise that was fulfilled 2,000 years ago and for which we are preparing for celebrations in 17 days time. What can we be doing this Advent to help bring the kingdom of heaven nearer? 
it continues. The King, God, Jesus will come again. He will. That's a promise we have to hold on to. But we can all do our part to bring that time, to bring the kingdom of heaven nearer here on earth. We pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What can we be doing this Advent as the kingdom of heaven continues to take hold as we prepare for the celebration of the promise already met and wait for the coming of the kingdom, the kingdom of heaven in all its fullness. What can we do in the kingdom of heaven today? We're going to watch just a short clip about waiting, about Advent being a time of waiting, of preparation and we're going to go into communion in a minute, that time when we celebrate what Jesus did when he was alive on earth, that promise that has been fulfilled, but knowing that we are waiting for the promise that is to come. What can we do in the meantime to help bring the kingdom of heaven nearer to Twerton, to our families, within our lives? So as we watch this, as we think about waiting, I pray that God may speak to each one of us. Lord, may we take time this Advent to make our hearts ready, to remember that you have put us here at this time and in this place, that we can come to you and repent, we can come to you and say sorry, and you heal our lives and you transform us. We are here in this time and in this place that we can be used like Jackie Pullinger, like Nelson Mandela, like that couple who started the food bank to bring your kingdom closer. Your kingdom of heaven is near and we can bring it closer to the people around us. So Lord, may we take time, may we slow down May we hear from you that we may be used in your kingdom as we wait for the fulfillment of your promise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.